equation that we're going to look at is the Penn State equation. The Penn State equation is a very popular equation that is used in critical care. Hello everyone, my name is Kim. I am a registered dietitian nutritionist, a certified diabetes educator, and owner of KimRoseDietitian.com. Welcome back to my channel. So last week, we looked at the predictive equations for healthy individuals. And I remember stating in that video that the predictive equations for healthy individuals are completely different from the predictive equations for individuals that need critical care. So today we're gonna to look at the four predictive equations for for critically care individuals. So without further ado, let us jump right into it. So the first equation is the ratio method. And the ratio method, in my opinion, is a very popular method. This method simply calculates the estimated calorie needs based on the kcal per kilogram ratio. Something that I like about this equation is number one, it is very simplistic. And additionally, the American Society of Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition still recommends that this equation be used. One big drawback of this equation is that it's not really so accurate for individuals requiring critical care when you compare it to some of the other equations which we're going to look at later on in this video. So so the next equation is the Ayrton Jones equation. The Ayrton Jones equation was one of the first predictive equations used that really did not involve a stress factor. Now, if you do not know what a stress factor is, you're actually going to have to go back to last week's video, which is popping up in one of these corners, and look what I mean by stress factor. So let's take a look at this equation. So the A stands for age, which is in years. W stands for weight, which is in kilograms. S stands for sex or your gender. So if you're male, you get a value of one. If you're female, you get a value of zero. T is the presence or absence of trauma. So if a trauma is present, you get a value of one. If it's absent, you get a value of zero. And B is a diagnosis of a burn. So if a burn is present, you get a value of one. And if it's absent, you get a value of zero. So with the validation studies for the Ayrton Jones equation, it showed that this equation is not really accurate for individuals who are intubated. And hence the Ayrton Jones equation is not really used in clinical practice today. The next equation, which is the third predictive equation for individuals that are required to have critical care is the Swinomer equation. The Swinomer equation is a little more complex than the last two equations we looked at. So let us take a look at what it looks like. So the Swinomer equation looks at the BSA or body surface area and that's in meters squared. It takes into consideration your age in years, your body temperature, which is in degrees Celsius. The RR is the respiratory rate, which is in breaths per minute, and it's found on the ventilator. And the VT, or the tidal volume, is in liters, and that is also found on the ventilator. Now, something that I did want to say about the Swinomer equation, if you don't know how to find the tidal volume or the respiratory rate, this is where collaboration comes in. That's why it's important for dietitians to have an open line of communication with different disciplines. So the respiratory therapist can help you to find the tidal volume as well as the respiratory rate. So from the validation studies, the Swinomer equation is not really recommended to be used at this time because it has a high rate of error. So the final equation that we're going to look at is the Penn State equation. The Penn State equation is a very popular equation that is used in critical care. So there are two types of Penn State equations and we're going to look at the earliest type of the Penn State equation. So this is what the Penn State equation looks like and it takes into consideration the Mifflin St. Jour formula. Now, let me just interject right here. If you do not know what the Mifflin St. Jour or MSJ formula is, I discussed that in my last video. The link is popping up now for you to go ahead and click on it and to find out what the MSJ formula is in order for you to understand this equation. So with the Penn State equation going right back to what it looks like, you actually have to calculate the Mifflin St. Jour formula first and then incorporate it into the Penn State equation. The VE is the minute ventilation which is in liters per minute and again you can use the assistance of the respiratory therapist the T max is the maximum temperature the body temperature of the patient and this is in degrees Celsius 
So studies have shown that this equation is valid for individuals who are morbidly obese. These are the four predictive equations for critically care individuals. And when you compare it to last week's video, the predictive equations for healthy individuals, you see that they're very different. So this is just a quick review introducing you to the equations for both types of clients. So if you have any questions specifically about any equations or how to calculate them or what factors to consider, please go ahead and leave that in my comment section below. As usual, remember to comment, like, subscribe, and have a good day. Share this video. Bye-bye.